we're we're both in very weird places this week, Hambo, because I'm, as you can see in our video feed, I'm in my new house in Leamington. I've never seen you be where you are right now. I'm in my house back at home. Uh, This is a curtain behind me. If I open it, there's no man. It is a very dark window because it's night time and you can't see outside. But it, there, it, there, there's also a, there's a second Hamish. I I I want to know I want to know what podcast that Hamish is doing. That Hamish is currently reporting recording a um, dark boy review with the Wilkie who's in the window in front of me. Wilkie Wilkie in the window is a song from Dear Evan Wilkie. Sure. I I that is the only song I know from Dear Evan Hansen. Play the theme yeah. tune. <laughs> episode of boy review a little show we like to do here at the weekend or as you call it wednesday yeah we're a, we're a different breed us we call it the weekend because with the boys yeah we got nothing better to do on a wednesday so we just call it the end of the week that's true though wilkie you soon might not have much else to do at the weekend because i'd heard that warwick's apparently because you're going back to warwick i am yes and they're doing online teaching for the first three weeks yeah a good idea. I, I I will agree that that's a very good idea, vis-a-vis not having contact with people. Um, if it continues, I'll feel like a bit of an idiot for moving into a, a new house that I have to pay money for. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I pay for this whole house. I could have been somewhere free, yeah, like where my parents are. Yeah, but it's 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 nice to be independent. Um, it's nice to to sort of have, uh, especially given that I, I'm living with with uh, a couple of our friends uh alex and and sophie uh it feels really weird calling them by their real names not their nicknames but um <laughs> we have to explain to the that we can't explain to the non-internet people but yeah no it's it there's there's upsides and downsides obviously yeah uh p- primary concern is reducing spread of the global pandemic it's good to not have a pandemic yeah wearing your mask is good good from boy review yeah, that's an extra bonus one for you this week. Yeah, no, that's actually my topic. I just got it out of the way. Feeling <laughs> You're lazy. Done. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna leave. I'm gonna go downstairs. Oh, please don't go. I want to do the show. No, with I'm you. not gonna. I'm not gonna go, Hambo. Don't worry. Hey, that's gonna be nice because I just, I really enjoy doing the show. It's one of my favorite parts of the week. I was driving home today, thinking, ah, oh, I can get, get back and do boy review. It was really nice, and I got stuck in traffic again. And I thought, oh no, oh no, flashbacks, bad memories. But thankfully, it was literally just like two miles from my house, so it's not bad. Though it was a very long, it was a very long time I was stuck because it's just like a single lane, and they had one of those things where they have like the works building works, but they've set up a traffic light system just on their own. Ah, I really would like to get one of those. Can I buy one, Wilkie? Well, like, can you can you buy a traffic light? Yeah, can I buy no specifically two so I can have I can control the flow of traffic. I'm I'm sure there's somewhere you could buy them. Uh, like a probably not Amazon, but yeah, sure. You you'd have to buy like an industrial generator as well because like you need to power them somehow. Just put up a really, just like get a really long pole with a solar panel on the end of it. Done. Really long, just reaching all the way directly to the sun. Yeah. Get it straight from the source. <laughs> That's- yeah, perfect. Just have one hundred percent efficiency right there. Boom. I don't think that's how science works, Wookie. Yeah, who knows? Oh, I had a great segue. Damn it. Um, I was saying Hamish that I would I would never abandon you here on this show, but I'm afraid I'm I'm not I'm not quite who you think I am, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this vent here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna run away. 
after killing you. That's right. Uh, my topic today is the game Among Us. That was a very in-depth segue, but would require a lot of knowledge on what Among Us is. Well then, let let me introduce you to Among Us. Now, Hambo, you, you you told me that you haven't played Among Us, which you should, by the way, once we're done recording this. Um, I I'll... just downloaded the phone app. Ah, wonderful. Are, are you aware of how the game works? Um, vaguely. A couple of Let's Players have given it a try. I have yet to watch any of those, oh, um, yes. but I will plan to. My understanding is it's some kind of... People have to do stuff on a ship, on a spaceship, and... There are some people, I don't know how many, but some number of those people are not real people. They're some kind of fake people, and their goal is not to help, but to hinder. Yes, that's pretty much it. And specifically, kill, I assume, by stab. Uh, well, that's actually something that's very interesting. So, uh, yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, there are... Uh, there's a, a team uh, of between four and ten players, uh, with one to three of these players being selected as imposters rather than crewmates. Um, it's a lot of people. You wouldn't have three imposters in a game of four people. That would be terrible because, of course, uh, I think actually they would just win immediately because you win if the imposters outnumber the teammates. So one option is for two imposters to to kill all but one crewmates and then they win. Uh, okay. But yes, the, the goal is to prevent the crew of this ship from completing their tasks, uh, which are often... Uh, maintenance based so oh you've got to run around the ship and open these three panels and stick the wires together uh, or you've got to go to one end of the ship and redirect some power Star Trek style and then run to the other end of the ship to the place you just directed the power to and accept that power transfer um, they're fairly monotonous these tasks but they can be quite fun uh, it's quite satisfying uh, so the the wire task there is a red pink blue and yellow wire and then mm-hmm. a shuffled combination of those colours on the other side, and you have to drag them across. And it's really satisfying when you get one where they're just all straight lines or where they crisscross perfectly. Um, so being being a crewmate is is far from uh, like a losing position. Um, but yeah, uh, it's often played with a uh, either a text chat or a, I, I prefer doing it with voice chat. I've been playing with Panto people recently, um, and it's very fun because you're not allowed to talk during the game. So you can't say like, "Oh, I'm I'm going to go do my medbay scan," and uh, then you know say like, "Oh, uh, Red's in here with me" or something. Because then, if if your body is discovered, it's obvious that Red did it. So you have to stay silent uh. until either someone discovers a dead body or someone calls an emergency meeting. Are these like home rules, or are they rules that the game imposes on you? Uh, the game. Well, uh, we we use Discord for our voice chat, so we the game cannot stop us talking through discord but we we impose it that they are the rules the game tells you to use okay for, uh, for example that there's nothing physically preventing you from taking all the money from the bank in monopoly but the rule is that you don't the rule is that you only take money when it's owed you unless you're me that's not true mom, my mom will be listening and thinking hey miss cheats in monopoly i i want to make clear i don't cheat at monopoly that would be bad i used to have a friend who cheated at monopoly uh but in a rather smart way, which was by pretending that she knew the rules to Monopoly off by heart, and so no one ever checked the rule book when she was around. Uh, <laughs> and it, 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 they were never very egregious, but like she would pretend that um, she would lie that uh, you could sell properties back to the bank, like uh, like houses and hotels. You could sell them back for their entire value. So she would like store all of her money in the form of houses and hotels, and then when she needed to like pay rent, she would just sell them as as she needed them no no but i can see you're shaking your head no that's not how it works you only you can only sell them back for half their value because otherwise uh, there's yeah. no risk the whole point is that there's that there's a risk in like uh investing in property anyway um yeah among us i played i've played it to be fair i've played it once i played for like th- two or three hours uh cl- closer to two maybe um and it's it's very fun and like I was saying, so we've we've played Werewolf, we've played Superheroes, these like hidden role style games. Yes. And it's often kind of boring in Werewolf where you get dealt the um the villager card because you're like, oh, okay, I guess I've just got to do work this round. I don't get to like do anything fun. I just have to go in with no information and do all the work myself. You know, I don't even get to be like 
the insomniac or anything cool. You, you've just got nothing to do, right? Yeah. In Among Us, the all of these little tasks are like little mini games. So, um, hmm, what's what's the most fun task? I'm trying to think. There's there's a task that everyone gets. Uh, you, you mentioned a spaceship. That's the uh, the Skeld map. The the spaceship is called the Skeld, and um, there's three maps currently available. Uh, Skeld, uh, I think it's called Mirabar, but that might be a name I've picked up from somewhere else. It's M something and uh, Polus, which is like a, a snowy moon base style map. Um, on the Skeld, there's a task everyone has to do, which is to go to admin and swipe your card through a card reader. But you have to actually click and drag and move it across the card reader. And you have to do it at the right speed. You can't go too slowly. You can't go too quickly. And it's like, I've actually got to, you know, pay attention as a crewmate. I've got to be like on top of my tasks. You've got to know the map uh, so you can get your tasks done quickly. Because if everyone does all their tasks, the crewmates win. Uh, and it's it's really cleverly designed because it, it really engages you as a as a crewmate, and your you know your job is far more than just run around aimlessly until you find a dead body and then you know try and remember who it was you saw running down the corridor the other way. So it's it's much more engaging than like uh, like I mentioned like a, another hidden role game where you might just be left with nothing to do. Yeah, no, because this sounds really interesting because um. Oh, I I, um, I talk about watching a lot of Let's Plays. I really like a series um, with uses Gmod, and uh, I particularly like watching Trouble in Terrace Town videos. Uh, it has a similar sort of hidden role system, um, but two things that seem very different. Is firstly, yeah, if you're not one of the, there are some roles on innocent and um, and uh, villain sides, traitor sides. That's it. But if you um, are just sort of a regular innocent so you've just got a green bar then you don't really get to do anything i guess the difference there though is, is you start to suspect, suspect people anyone can kill anyone else so if you're an innocent person you think someone's dodgy you can shoot them but there's also then the negative of you might lose karma which determines how much damage you can deal if you kill too many people on your own team um but so i guess that's interesting and then also you talked about the talking when i watch uh, this series, a lot of them impose a "you're dead, you're dead" rule. So if you if you die, you cannot talk anymore, um, which can lead to some funny scenarios where someone will be talking, and they will then just stop talking mid sentence because they get killed. Uh, but I guess, and th- and there's often the phrase, "Oh, if I die, Red did it, or whoever this person is did it." Yeah. Um, so that, I guess, yeah, that that sort of talk is allowed. Yeah, but like, uh, it it can be quite fun because. You can like uh, during this uh, 120 second discussion phase, you can technically talk about anything you want. Uh, so say like I find a dead body, I saw uh, dark blue or whatever, because the, the the crewmates are all color coded, so you don't have to know everyone's name if you're playing with strangers. Because uh, you you can play online with strangers and just use the text chat, but it's it's not quite as fun. Um, be like, oh, I I saw dark blue leaving the room when I found the dead body. I I, I suspect them, and then. Um, you know, you you discuss and you say, okay, well, I'm gonna follow dark blue. You know, if 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 we, because uh, you can skip a vote, so you might say, oh, we don't actually have enough evidence. Uh, I I dark blue might not have been leaving the room. I just saw them in the corridor. They might have run past just like me. So, I'm I'm gonna follow dark blue. Next round. Um. So, what you talk about rounds? So, is it sort of like you're all doing your tasks? And then someone will find a dead body. Does that sort of like pause the game for a bit? So it goes, okay, you've got two minutes or some period of time to talk about what's been going on. Yes. So um, when then... when the like alert gets called, either yeah through someone declaring that they found a body, or uh, someone pressing the emergency meeting buzzer, um, the game is paused. Everyone is brought back to the central location, which is often the cafeteria of whatever place we're in, and. Um, yeah, you all discuss. Uh, votes can be skipped. Like, oh, I don't want to vote for anyone. I don't think I I know who is the imposter enough to to be you know confident enough to vote on them. So I'm just going to skip. Mm-hmm. Votes get skipped because, uh, of course, if you do vote on someone, they are removed. They are ejected. Ah, so from if the... you if you eject somebody that's not the imposter or not one of the imposters, then you kind of can hurt yourselves. Yeah, 
uh, you you obviously lose uh, you lose one crewmate, and if you lose too many crewmates, then the imposters win automatically. Because um, if you think about it, say there's two imposters, and they get it down to a group of five, they can just immediately kill two people, and they win because the the, uh, the imposters then outnumber the crewmates. Uh, and how many how many people can the imposters kill? Is it one per round? Each, it's or is um, it one. They they have a, a cooldown on their kill ability, uh, which is uh, okay. by default fifteen seconds. Oh, that's quite short then. Yeah, uh, I've 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 wanted to play a um, I've I've used lots of words. Uh, I've like a Metal Gear Solid or like a like a Genji playthrough where the imposter. Uh, well, everyone has like three times running speed, which is ridiculous. We tried it and it's horrible. Uh, but the imposter has no kill countdown, so they can just like ch- just run. Th- it's it's really funny to me just the idea of the imposter just running around with a katana just killing people in like a long line <laughs> but obviously that'd yeah, be a, a, it wouldn't be very fun but yeah um often that kill cooldown is something that is used in in arguments like i ran past white and i went into the reactor room and i saw a body uh and then white would be like if, if i'm the imposter why didn't i kill you you were alone and it's like oh well because you were on cooldown because it hadn't been 15 seconds since you killed him um so it's 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 very interesting and i i have a problem of getting a bit heated i get i get because i i, I feel what yeah you get heated hambo don't no. do this to me don't do this to me no, what that's crazy i get that's i get insane. so stressed and i feel like if like if i discover no. a body and i'm like it has to be this person because i saw them running away and like i get so confident in these beliefs because i feel like if 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 we don't do anything. You're gonna be next. They're gonna get you. Yeah, I'm absolutely next whenever that happens. But um, it sounds like a really, really cool game, Wilkie. You have convinced me that I should play it at some point. Yeah, is I it on Steam? It, it is. It's on Steam for uh, four pounds. Uh, it's on your phone for free. Yeah. Uh, I have I have personally invested an extra two pounds and nine pence to uh, get a little mini crewmate who runs around and follows me. Uh, it's very cute until I get shot in the face. And my little pet, my little mini crewmate, uh, stays where I died, just sitting there. Oh, that's even better. I really want to play this game. We should, at that price, Wilkie, we could honestly convince a lot of people in our group chats to get that game. Yeah, I, I, like, a lot of people in, in Panto have it. I know you're not in Panto, but um, Izzy, Izzy said I had to convince you uh, to come play. So I think we're doing that now. Yeah. I think, I think we should get people from our house last year to play as well. Yeah, that would be really good because this sounds awesome, man. For like four pounds, that's not I think bad. You mentioned Among Us before, and in my head, it was like, oh, it's probably going to cost like four guys' money, which is fifteen or something. And it's like that's not expensive, but it's still not cheap, cheap. I, I want to say also, uh, I, I mentioned getting shot in the face. There are so many kill animations. Uh, so when when the, when the imposter kills you, your screen like completely shifts to a like a much more zoomed in animation of the imposter killing you and there are so many i i can't tell how many of these were fan made and how many were real but there's one where the imposter is wearing like a a minecraft diamond helmet and they kill you with a diamond sword there's one where they kill you with a halo energy sword there's one where they drop an anvil on your head um there's so many wookie i'm gonna get this game after the show it's so fun it's so fun let's do it um so if you had to give this game a review i can't possibly imagine what it's going to be Honestly, based honestly, on your positive talk. Honestly, I again, I said I want to set a higher standard for myself. It's fun, and I have a lot of fun playing it. But <gasps> I, I think there's room for improvement. They're making a sequel. I think they could add more variety. I think they could add more things that people can do. Uh, I think it would be really interesting if they added like a detective, like they have in Trouble in Terrorist Town. If they added more more abilities for the imposters, I thought it'd be cool if the imposters could have like a hologram where they can project themselves in two rooms at once. So it's like, no, it can't be red. I saw him in Reactor. But really, that's just a hologram that's just running randomly around the building. But then recognizing the hologram becomes a new skill. And then once once people can recognize holograms, then there's a different thing. Um, I'm going to give it a bad good. Okay. Because at the moment, it's very simple. It's good, but it's very simple. And I think I, I, I want to give them room to expand. Uh, that that's uh, inner uh, inner sloth studios. I want to give them some room to expand. Well, a g- game that I don't think needs to expand any more is the subject of my ne- of my topic. I was going to say my next topic. We've only done one. Pause.
it's segment time. Do 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 do. do, do. It's, it's segment, segment time. time. Uh, hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to a segment that was uh, uh, that we teased last week. Uh, hello, and wel- you're holding me to this. Welcome to Pitch Pitch, episode one. <laughs> A podcast within a podcast. A podcast within a podcast. This week we pitch uh, Pitch Perfect 4. Uh, this time it's about sea shanties. Uh, I did I, 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 uh, I, I did consider calling it uh, Shanty Raid, but that's a bad title. And also Pitch Perfect films do not traditionally have subtitles. So this is Pitch Perfect 4. Um, okay. So I don't know how Pitch Perfect 3 ended. And if I'm honest, I've seen both Pitch Perfect 1 and 2. I don't remember how either of those ended. I've not seen Pitch Perfect 3, so I don't know. Ever. I have no recollection. My my understanding is that the Pitch Perfect films take place in the modern day. Yes. But sea shanties aren't that popular these days. Anna Kendrick is in it. Yes. Um, Anna Kendrick's in the, this one as well. There's the... There's the... Amy... Amy... Uh, what's it? Amy... No, it's not Amy Schumer. What's the... The the Australian or New Zealand woman? Rebel Wilson. Rebel Wilson! She's very good. She's she's in it. Um, And there's the woman from Bumblebee. Yes. I don't know her. Hayley yeah. Steinfeld? Maybe. Hayley Steinfeld? And, and a lot of other people. So, Wookiee, I know where you're going with this. Sea shanties aren't popular anymore. Time travel. This one's set in the 1870s. Exactly. That's where they need to go. It's like Fuzz and Furious 9. They're going to space. This time, pitch perfect. They're going back in time. Well, hang I on. I think is it starts it... off in the past. Do Is it the same characters? Is it is it Anna Kendrick's Becca Mitchell travelling to the I, past? I think it's... It's not Becca Mitchell. I think we need to call her like R- Rebecca Mitchell the second. Miss Rebecca Mitchell the Mitchell the second. Miss Rebecca Mitchell. Dame Rebecca Mitchell. No, I don't think. I think that's a bit much. I don't think she's a dame. Okay, maybe she's like a a a, a da or a m. Mm? She's like half a dame. She wouldn't be a dame in America, would she? No, uh, she'd be a. Uh, Lady. Lady Rebecca Mitchell. A lady. Um, A lady Rebecca Mitchell. My idea was that, um, because sea shanties are obviously sung on ships. Yeah. So instead of her... What I did was rewrite Pitch Perfect 1, but with sea shanties, which isn't the goal of this... uh, this... No, it's to find a new movie. But I I thought, what? so her dad is a university lecturer, right? What if her dad is a, 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 a US Navy captain? And he says, "Yes, daughter, you have to come on my ship and work there. And she's like, oh, this sucks because I'm not getting paid because women didn't get paid to be in the Navy until 1890. Oh, well, Wilkie, that's, that's, really, that's really bad. I want to say that. Bad, bad. And not getting paid for their work? Bad, bad. But yeah, she hates it until she hears someone singing a sea shanty and she joins in. And, and she learns to love singing sea shanties. And then like the end of the film is... Uh, they have to like fight pirates or something, and she starts singing a sea shanty because everyone's being really disorganized. And sea shanties were working songs, uh, so they they keep everyone in a rhythm. And everyone's really disorganized. Everyone's panicking until she starts singing a sea shanty, and she gets everyone like calm and organized. I love this. I love this image we're getting. I can see Rebel Wilson just swinging in like Jack Sparrow on a rope from one ship to another. Well, the, the problem is we can't include more than one woman. Because none, they're not allowed to be in the Navy. Wilkie, this is where Hambo comes in and says, I like where we started off. I like her being on her dad's ship. I like her discovering sea shanties. I think we could work it on the original ship if we want to stick rhetorically accurate. We could easily fit in a gag where a woman's disguised as a, as a man or a boy trying to be stow away on a ship because she wants to go on it. And then, however, yeah. I think in the honour of Pitch Perfect about empowering people we have a whole other we have a women's only ship come along and they recruit i'm gonna guess i'm gonna say rebel wilson was the stowaway because i think it'd be quite funny to see yeah she's she's kind of the comedic character yeah um and then her and anna kendrick jump over to this new ship and they live a they live a great life and then are these pirates and it's like pirates, but sea shanty singing pirates they can go on a whole escapade of adventures maybe they can find some lost treasure that can be a whole thing. They, and they the lost treasure. Davy Jones and he's got tentacles on his face. Yeah, and like they, they sing up they maybe they sing about sort of this legend is one of the songs and that's how they know all the stuff. And maybe they go to the island, because it's, it's got to be on an island, you can't just bury stuff in the water. That's not really burying the it. The island of Tortuga. Yeah. And they get there and they're like, Wow, that's a 
big old turtle shell that's just floating there. We're not going to dive too deep into that. And then they go onto the island and like maybe there's sea shanty, I can't say this word, sea shanty like challenges. So, you know, you've got to charm the snakes. You've got to coax a coconut down from the tree. Snake shanty. By singing nicely to it. Yes. Softly. This is <laughs> pitch, pitch pirates of the Caribbean perfect. And at the end... The the maybe the original her dad shit because whilst her dad might have been a dick and not paid or anything, maybe she loves her dad and her dad's in a lot of trouble and then they come along and they're like we'll save you and, and they, they they sing a, a they sing a rousing sea shanty, and then and then her dad's like you know what maybe we should pay women and and Anna Kendrick can be like I don't need your money anymore wow I've got my own she puts on her shades and is like yeah in the background yeah and, and then she... we jump ahead twenty years. Uh, and we meet Anne Bradford Stokes, who's a character we've never met before. And uh, we see that she gets paid $12 to be on a Navy ship. Yeah, they start paying people. And then we wake up and it was all a dream. It was all a dream. And 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 uh, Anna Kendrick is in her bedroom. And Pitch Perfect 1 hasn't even begun yet. It's, a, it's like a happy death day situation. Oh, damn. She has to win... She has to win the... Um, the singing competition before she gets killed but the singing competitions are like the end of the year uh so she keeps so she's got a year to avoid being killed well because you've just pitched pitch perfect five we're getting ahead of ourselves yeah we're getting ahead of okay we're getting ahead of ourselves we can't do we can't do pitch pitch next week because we're doing prime time again oh, okay well i don't know when we'll do pitch pitch again and i think it's funny i think we've got something workable there what's uh given that i, I interrupted you to bring this in uh what's your topic hambo my topic is I tried to do the, the Fortnite default dance. Ah, I yes. I did the music. Because I want to talk about Fortnite. Our oh, Wilkie's not doing it way better. Um, I just want to talk about Fortnite. I, I did put up a thing of just the emotes and I had thought about just talking about Fortnite dances as a concept, but I think I just want to do the whole game because it's just easier. Because I've talked about Fortnite on this show before. Again, I'm recycling some of my old topics just because I've been busy with lots of other stuff. And also, Fortnite has become a big thing in my life again very recently because of their new season. It's all Marvel themed. So I thought I'd come back to the Things have changed a lot, so I think we can talk about things. Again, yeah, things have changed a lot. Because, yes, you've all heard of this Battle Royale. Simple concept. A hundred pit layers in teams of one, two, or four, because that 100 is is divisible by all of those numbers will fall out of battle bus onto an island they will slow their descent with some kind of parachute or glider or umbrella they will land they will find weapons armor no not weapons uh they will find weapon they will no they will find weapons they won't find armor they'll find like potions which give them shield uh, and they'll find materials like wood stone and metal and they will build structures and they will fight and eventually only one player will be alive or maybe two or four depending on the team size and that that team or person will win and they'll get a victory royale and they'll feel really really cool and that's that's the game and it's really really awesome you have this cool island with lots of different locations uh, right now it's marvel inspired because they're doing a big marvel season it's actually tying into the comic books galactus the big world devourer monster is coming down to eat the fortnite island and thor who has recently become a herald of Galactus has gone to the island to warn people. He's also brought like some of his mates along. So I think uh, you've got like Iron Man has shown up, Wolverine, uh, Captain America was previously a skin, and for some of the other skins, like some of the X Force, they've tied those characters into the comic book. So uh, Captain America might become sort of an official Nexus War character. Uh, yeah, they've got like Cable, Psylocke, Mystique. Uh, Doctor Doom has recently been added. He's really, really cool. And yeah, you're just yeah. You, you showed around. me that you had Doctor Doom. And yes. you got to sit in a chair. Yes, because well, um, that is true. Because yeah, they've made the island theme so you can find sentinels, which have been broken up and destroyed, and their like hand can launch you off. Uh, you can find just like little Marvel references around. Um, but some of the other locations are like entirely Marvel themed. So they've added really recently Tony Stark's lab there you can find an npc iron man who you can kill and if you do that you can pick up the um the repulsar like gun thing which is quite fun but the way 
better item is the unibeam if there's just huge explosion that you do it takes a long time to recharge but it just like blasts through buildings and will do a lot of damage to whoever it hits it's very nice uh, so i, I think you tweeted about the uni beam didn't you yeah because um it you was... were that you never use twitter you were that excited that you tweeted about the uni i beam. wanted to start using twitter a bit more and i was very excited about using the uni beam because it was really hard wilkie i'm i enjoy fortnite and i'm decent but i'm not good in some of the the, the typical like building and all of that main mechanic i'm just i've never really practiced it i've just because i play on the switch and the xbox the it's a bit easier than playing on pc so i've never had to be brilliant to, in order to get a, a victory on occasion and uh there was this person they were building a lot and i just couldn't destroy it fast enough and i thought i'm gonna try the unibeam and they were just sort of stood behind this wooden wall that i couldn't break it was like slowly patching up and they were trying to heal really quickly and i just you just you float into the air charge up a beam and then you just fire and it obliterated the person i felt so powerful hell yeah a character um they've they've added other items so you can find dr doom's equipment Uh, you can go and do the same with an npc dr doom take him out it's not quite as fun you get like this big ball of energy that you can throw and it burns stuff uh, which is really cool um, but it's not quite as powerful as Iron Man's equipment. And then also you can randomly find some of the other power-ups. So you can find like Thor's hammer, uh, which just drops a giant Mjolnir from the sky and does something. I had a very good victory with that. Uh, there was the two people battling it out. Again, doing a lot of other building. I just went, okay, I'm going to get both of them in this circle. Dropped the Mjolnir, crashed through everything. They both died and I won. And I felt Hell so yeah. good again. Um, it's and those yeah, and- thousand IQ plays that always feel the best. They do, and I think that's why Fortnite is so much fun, because yeah, it's it, it, it does a good balance of making you feel really dumb and stupid when a bot kills you or one of the NPCs kills you, but it also makes you feel really powerful when you manage to kill another player, even if they are a, a player in inverted commas because they're played by the computer and you just don't know. It's it's really, really, really cool to do. It's also fun to play with friends, friends a lot like Among Us. We have uh, quite a few friends that do Fortnite and we I've been playing with them uh been playing with uh Alex and Andy quite a few bit uh quite a few times played with Izzy a couple of times as well until her laptop decided she didn't it didn't like Fortnite anymore and uh that was a shame was there was something else that was really cool that I wanted to talk about oh yes uh you mentioned the Doctor Doom emote one thing they've also added this season is a lot more specific emotes for characters so Thor or like specific things for each character so only thor can use mjolnir uh only storm can do this animation where her she floats in the air and her cape appears as she sort of glides down um from the battle bus and then my favorite one that they've added is well actually my two favorites are mystique uh she if she kills a player she can assume their skin she looks like them oh that's pretty cool and then dr doom i had yeah has the most sort of over the top emote which he can only use if you get a Vic royale uh, which can be done in other game modes like uh, team rumble which is 20 v 20 with respawn and it's it's more like just shooting each other uh, but if you get a Vic royale in any game mode you can use this emote and this throne just comes up out of the ground uh, it dr doom spins around and just sits in it and it, he's facing the screen which doesn't happen very often it gives you a very nice sort of screen with the the victory royale just above your head and you just feel very powerful Yes, now I I, I have a question. Yes. You said that you said that this officially ties in with the comics. Uh-huh. So if if I play a game of Fortnite mm-hmm. and I, I meet a player who's wearing the Thor skin mm-hmm. and I shoot them in the head with a shotgun and they die, mm-hmm. does that mean that canonically in the comics I was there and I killed Thor? with a shotgun to his head no unfortunately not because firstly uh, i've i've used the word like killing a lot fortnite is very clear that you don't kill anybody they get sort of digitized and taken away by this weird robot creature because uh, you can reboot people so i don't think anyone actually dies in in fortnite it's specifically being knocked down and then well, being eliminated even so i even so i, I uh bested thor in the combat arena when he was wielding Mjolnir, uh, a blessed hammer forged in the heart of a star, and I uh, shot him in the head with a pump-action shotgun, and he died. Kind of. 
Kind of. I, I think that the, what Fortnite does a lot of storytelling. Uh, it the way it prefers to do it is with sort of its weekly update. It will change not necessarily the map itself. Sometimes there will be big changes to the map. Like recently, a giant big pancake mountain appeared with Tony Stark stuff on it. it it's the best way to describe it. Well, can you Google it. Uh, is but, it actually made of pancakes? No, it, it's just a very. It's like a disc, but it's a mountain, so it's it's hard to climb up to it. But it's a disc, like um, like Sugarloaf Mountain in in South Africa. Sure, we'll say like yes. A, like a big, like a big flat plateau. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, they just that so that sort of dropped in. That did really alter the map. But they do a lot more things with sort of little props. So uh, they sometimes it's for their bigger plots. You know, they've talked when they've done this Marvel stuff. You see, you see like Tony Stark putting these weird things around uh, which obviously start because they say stark industry some they're red and they look like iron man stuff and they're creating these weird beams of light and they're doing something like that uh you know when they had their in season two of this chapter chapter two they had um you know lots of references to the ghost v shadow uh battle that was happening on with the spies and they had um these weird pillars appearing uh, for the big event build up you know at the end of last season at the end of the last chapter they had all of the again these uh in world sort of uh appearance based things sort of setting up what the plot was even though the game itself has no plot uh but they were sort of saying oh yes this has happened so you know they've had these lorries are moving down a road and you can see you know last week in the update they were back up here this week they're further down uh they did that for like the super they did a superhero season which was a bit more generic and so they had a big meteorite crash down and there were these lorries mining it and then they would they would carrying those those mined objects down a road and they were taking it to the villain's lair it was really cool um and sometimes they do it with smaller stories they've been doing a lot of stuff with teddy bears and gnomes in this chapter that you just, so yes Casey, i remember that there's just gnomes and teddy bears on a fight and it's really cool to see them dotted around sometimes you'll see like a a teddy bear torture chamber where it's got it's sat in a chair and it's got lights blowing at it and there's a gnome just looking at it from the outside uh, and and it's a bit dark but it's cute and fun and cuddly and that's all you have to remember with Fortnite. it's it's cute and fun and cuddly so ignore the fact that that was a pump action shotgun to the face so there there is a a story that is presented to the players but the the events of a of any given round of Fortnite are not canon to any comic yes but the you know where, where when you see you know, Thor and Galactus and these characters like interacting in perhaps cutscenes or interact or like when you see Tony Stark building this object, then that is something that Tony has canonically built. Yes, that is that's that's sort of how it goes, and I think it works really well. They're really opening themselves up to some of these cutscenes. Um, they've done they've done some really interesting things this chapter, really trying to build up a world. There was this very odd moment where this person tried to sort of fight the storm uh and they haven't really addressed it it happened a couple of seasons ago but tried to push the storm back and it ripped through reality and people just appeared in an office building and jonesy who's the blonde haired typical fortnite character just like went you shouldn't be able to see me and then everyone popped back into a real the reality of the fortnite and uh i think it's it's interesting to see them do all this stuff and it's still you know the game itself is still a lot of fun it's it's hard to really do better than a battle royale i think as a game mode because it's really cool to watch it's really cool to partake in builds up a lot of the the right emotions inside of you i I don't feel like i i die because i am bad at the or i feel like i die because i'm bad at the game not because the game has cheated me in some way and yeah i feel like i've rambled on about fortnite a lot other positives as well you know it does microtransactions quite well it's a free game so you can enjoy it all for free uh, they do all these really cool concerts in the game that you can just attend if you are logged in at the right times. Oh yeah, there was a Travis Scott concert. That was a big one, but they also now have a party hub. So rather than you loading onto the main islands, you load into this separate location where it's all just party based. So you can play with paintball guns and uh, do these like time trial challenges. And that's where they host other concerts now. And that's a really awesome concept that they've really tried to develop. And I think that I think I did have some issues with Fortnite when I last talked about it. And they've done a lot to really take a lot of those issues and grow on them, make make it feel better. They do well about sort of they've got so many different items now. They each season they do cycle in new and old ones. They've added driving and boats, and uh, they've added helicopters. And I think they've got a good balance of nothing feeling 
too overpowered some of the legendary weapons are quite strong but they do have their limits you know i think they've they've done a little bit to tweak the unibeam and uh, stuff since i first used it and i think it does it does feel like you can win even if you don't have one of these legendary weapons still and i think that they they've done a lot to really keep it fun at the end of the day and last time i might have given it a bat something with a bad in it but this time i want to give it a good good because fortnite has since then done a lot to improve itself and i'd like to think that we played a part of that uh and with all of that i will give a little segment here our second one of the good good gang because yes we did another competition i asked everyone on instagram uh, i needed help because i'm trying to guess what wilkie's favorite animal is and i've not determined it on based on what the correct answer is I yeah i was it. gonna say i i don't remember you asking me like hey i need an answer for this question I, you just sort of did it and i was like okay uh what is my favorite animal go on i'm gonna guess i've, I've looked at all the suggestions and based on some things i'm gonna i'm gonna say your favorite animal wilkie is a toad and the reason i picked a toad is because in our recent D D game not the one that you're now running but the one that our other friend Andy runs. Uh, you played a character called Colo, who had a big warty toad, and you kept going on about how much you loved the idea of this big warty toad. And I thought, yes, I could see Wilkie with a toad in real life, just in a, just on a little. I, I, I don't quite, you know, like a cat stand, like a pole. Yeah. Now imagine put a bed on top of it that's really comfy. That's where your toad would sit on a pedestal. Or I do, I do, I do like toads. They're very cute. And so I could see a toad being your favorite animal. It just sort of sits there. I saw a video recently of uh, someone who owns frogs, not not quite toads, but sort of the the appeal is the same. I like just the sort of the way they just sort of sit there and just exist. Uh, but they were they were putting uh, Lego hats, like hats that go on Lego minifigures, but they were putting them on their toad, Aww. on on their, their little their little frog pets, and it was very really cute because they they sort of fit quite well because of the size, the 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 ratios were all correct, and they had a little cowboy hat or a little um. Yeah, like a very tall stovepipe hat, and it's like they're the mayor of of oh. their little box. Frog Town. Yeah, oh, that's really the nice. mayor of Frog Town. And the the that was suggested by Prompted Writing Podcast on Instagram, and they nominated one of that. So the podcast as a whole gets a good good, and they nominated Bella, and um, Izzy has prepared this little segment, which is say to say because Izzy has foiled all of your attempts to be queen of prompted, she offers a peace treaty, uh, which is she's gonna. Pers- I'm not gonna read this out verbatim, by the way, because I- Izzy has granted Bella a lot of control over boy review, and I don't like that. So I'm just gonna tweak it. Yeah, we're, we're gonna we're gonna editorialize. Um, yeah, we're gonna renegotiate the terms of this contract. Yeah, it's a peace cause... treaty. Um, she's bestowed upon Bella a membership of the good good gang yeah i'm 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 chiseling away the marble as we speak i hadn't fully vetted this they'd also like to add toad tony as a henchman to the good good gang i i think we can add toad tony it's not very I'll long put, i'll put him in i'll indent him underneath bella yeah not not a full oh doesn't bella have a, a toad tattoo yeah because we, we we know the hosts of prompted podcast in real life i because I, I, I think you've said re- you've said previously that obviously izzy's your yes. girlfriend and Izzy is a host of Prompted. Yes, we swear there's no uh, there's no cheating here. But I it is it is honestly random. I do promise. It just a lot of our friends take part in these polls at the moment. We we haven't built out an audience much beyond our friendship group. So at least for a few more weeks, our friends are likely to be the winners of these competitions just by probability alone. So they they they'd better exploit that chance while they still have it. Before yeah, because you're gonna blow up. You're going to feel really bad when, like, if our group chat have, say, eight people, seven of them are part of the Good Year Gang, and one of them just cannot. Because we're not going to, we're not just going to give these things away, Wookie. It's a certificate no. and whole, it's a whole lot. What, what, one or two a week at most. Right. Um, so yeah, Toad Tony gets a little, a little indented mark underneath Bella. And we Prompted hope, writing podcast. And Izzy and Bella, we all hope, uh, we hope that you enjoy being good good. And... Izzy would like to say to Bella, she hopes that she enjoys her reign as part of the Good Good Gang. Well, she's on the she's on the marble slab, so have fun. Two thumbs up. Good good. Good good. Now our our, our episode today, Hambo, has been has been fairly chocker. It's been fairly yeah. busy. Uh, it's been rather video game heavy. We've been indoors a lot playing video games yeah. this episode. As much as 
we're perhaps not allowed to do this right now. It's not maybe the best idea. Maybe we can reminisce I'm about going to the beach. Let's, Let's go get go away. Oh, I was about to do the same thing. <laughs> ah! Yeah. <laughs> same brain cell. <laughs> Ninky Minjaj. I didn't know it was the a beach. Nicki Minaj song. The beach song. is fun. I what? I didn't know that was a Nicki Minaj song. Yeah. Isn't it? Let's go to the beach. Beach. Let's go get a wave. They say. Well, was that like, was it's... Pitbull involved in that song? Was that somebody else as well? Are you thinking of Timber? No, I'm not thinking of Timber. Maybe I am. No. Let's go to the... Is it just Nicki Minaj that does that song? Is there not someone else? It's like... As far as... Uh, hang on. The point of view, we do Nikki? check our facts. Infrequently, but when it matters. <laughs> Nicki Minaj pregnant, says Google. No. Uh, Nicki Minaj beach song. It's called Starships by Nicki Minaj, apparently. Oh, yeah, because Starships, they're meant to fly. Starships is about defying expectations and realising your potential, a lesson that's very close to Nicki Minaj's heart. This track saw Nicki Minaj make her big transition from urban crossover rapper to mainstream pop songstress. With a little help from producer-songwriter Red One, the, I'm reading here from Genius.com, the baddest bitch takes her super bass success to the next level. Wow. See, I, I I don't know that I was comfortable saying those words. See, I was aware of Starships. It's a it's a good song, and it's it's fun to sing on to. I had no clue that Nicki Minaj wrote it. I she didn't just write it; she performed it. She sung it. No, I know. I don't know who I thought did all of those things. I just didn't imagine Nicki Minaj. But good on her. It's a good song, and good on all the other songs. She is the baddest bitch. She is. She she the gets, baddest she gets to good. go on the. She gets to go on the baddest, baddest. Not in a not in a bad way, but she gets to go on the baddest, baddest uh, yeah, thing. She that's does it, that with that's pride. It's, it's different. It's different. Anyway, the beach. I live in Brighton, which means I have ample access to the beach. I have many fond memories of going to the beach uh, as uh, as a child. Um, my school would always do a like a yearly picnic, like our end of summer term. We'd all go to a beach. Um, uh, near a place called the Seven Sisters, uh, near a place called Beachy Head. Makes sense. There'd be a beach at Beachy yeah. Head. Yeah. How, how annoying! Would, how upset would you be if you were driving along the coast and like, don't worry, little Timmy, we're going to take you to the best beach in the world. And you get to Beachy Head and there's nothing there. It's just a single tree. In some ways, is that? Why is there? Why is there a tree? Oh, it's a beach tree. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we'd sit there on the beach and we'd have uh, we'd have like our, uh, often the parents would bring food. Because um, we were primary school children, we couldn't really prepare our own food at that point. You could try. Um, well, at least not like in an organised picnic way. We just <laughs> bring a bag full of bread and just like, well, I guess we're eating bread because I'm not allowed to use knives. Oh. But that that was always fun. Uh, we'd always go rock pooling. Did you ever go rock pooling? How about what's how how frequently did you go to the beach? Because I, I feel like you were a bit more landlocked than I am. So uh, when at the moment, yes. I've been living in a landlocked county in the UK for quite a long time now, since I was, what, about seven. But when I was a bit younger, I uh, I lived in Northern Ireland, and uh, we would go to the beach quite frequently. I don't... I, I'm not very good at geography, and I don't quite know how near I lived to the beach in Northern Ireland, but we would go. I, I feel like with some frequency, and it was really cool. Uh, I remember like that... Like once I have a these, week? Once a month? Uh, I f- uh, particularly when I was younger, sort of before school, yeah, I could easily see us going maybe once every couple of weeks, maybe a couple of times a month to, during the during the hotter periods. And yeah, there's there's also pictures of me at the beach uh, with my mum and dad. I'm just you know I'm shouting, sitting on different rocks, climbing around, doing a lot of rock pooling. Yeah, getting looking for all those little little creatures with uh, to just sort of look at and stare at and point at. They're really cute. Um, I have this very... I can't remember why, but I have this big memory of... Um, we used to have a Land Rover and it sort of... Dad driving it onto the beach and sort of circling round. I don't think he did a donut, but he just sort of... I'm just driving along a bit and then coming out. I think because we brought some like things to set up and my parents decided it would just be easier to dri- to see if there was anyone there, carefully drive it on and then just set up the car there. It was really cool. And... Uh, yeah, I have. I really enjoyed going to the beach a lot as a kid. Uh, you know, playing in the sand, sandcastles. Classic. Wow. Brilliant time, uh, pastime. Obviously, yeah, now don't do that as often. Uh, I've been to the beach a couple of times with Izzy because she lives near Brighton. Uh, and we've, we've, it's the thing to do. 
quite enjoy going to the pier. I get when I my my uncle lives also down near Brighton. I have a lot of people that live near Brighton. It's it's a good place to go. Have been to the pier several times. I enjoy playing on all the machines. It's not quite the beach, but it's there. You can see the sand. Yeah. I I haven't been to the pier ever. Like I've 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 walked around the outside, I guess, to like go and look at the sea. I've not been inside any of the buildings. I've not been on any of the rides. It's just a, a as as far as I can tell, it's just a scam. What? That's. I guess it's sort of like a tourist thing, but yeah, it's. I, it's, I, still I mean, feel like... it's just a. Why? Why? Why would you go inside and play with like exorbitantly expensive arcade machines when you're literally at the seaside? Like, there's much nicer things you can do for free. True. It's fun to go on the beach. Um. I feel like we have to we have to take you to a pier. This is a thing we do post lockdown. You and I go to the pier because okay. it's a lot of fun. Because the the advantage of the piers is that yes, they they can rack up a lot of money, but also if you only have say a couple of pounds, you can just play a lot of the two P machines. Yes, you will lose that pa- those that money. You will not make money on two P machines unless you are very very lucky. But yeah, you could you know for one pound you can get fifty plays, which is. Like, that's good math. So that's good maths right there. That's a lot of plays, Wilkie, on a little machine. And yeah, that sometimes is, yeah. and some of the arcade places are really cool. I did one with Izzy, which was like a Halo campaign. We didn't do very well, I can tell you that. But we we got to play some Halo, and it was really cool. Like, were you Master really... Chief? No, you're some were other you... Spartans. Ah, uh, what's what's your Spartan name, Hamish? Well, it would still be Hamish because his name didn't change. His name is still John. <laughs> He just kept his name. Um, so you're like Hamish, Chief... Hamish 420. Uh, yeah, I might go for like Hamish 418 because I really like the Pokemon Buizel. Ah, yes, Hamish 418. But then what's your like Master Chief is his rank, isn't it? Yeah, which is well, a okay. stupid name. It's yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not a name. It's a rank. It's a position. It's like if if someone said it called you, yes, your name is podcaster. I'm I'm Wilkie uh 69 and my. My rank is Commander Crunch. Did so, you know that Captain Crunch is actually a commander? Y- you've said this. I think you've, yeah. you've said this actually on an episode of Boy Review. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a fun it's a fun fact that according to his uniform, he's actually a commander. Technically, we wouldn't be. I wouldn't be Hamish Fawn and you wouldn't be Wilkie Six Stone. I think we'd be Sierra, followed by the number. Because I'm assuming that based on the fact that it's a Spartan S, and and John is Sierra One One Seven. Isn't he John One One Seven? Yeah, but he's also Sierra one one seven S. Okay, is his other is this like his code number? I like him. Oh, and then people just call him John one one seven as like a nickname. So, um, beaches. Nicki Minaj is the baddest beach. <laughs> oh, what what do you like to do when you go to the beach, Wookie? Do you, you you mentioned uh, rock pooling? Do you like building sandcastles like I do? Do you uh, like going out into the I, water? I don't often get the chance to build sandcastles because Brighton is a very rocky beach. Um, but. Even when I've been to sandy beaches, I don't really do I don't really do sand castles. I don't think I did. I I enjoy swimming. I enjoy going in the water. Um, it's 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 very fun once you sort of commit to going in the water and like just throw yourself in and you get over that like moment of like oh it's really cold. Uh, it's really fun swimming in the sea. I love like you get bobbed bobbed up and down. You just pee yourself a bit and it heats up. Gross. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you out the Hamish. If you edit that out, I swear to God, <laughs> you've got to keep that in. You've got to keep that in the show. Everyone's um, peed in the ocean. Gross! Stop peeing in the ocean. Um, Everyone's there's, done it. There's fish live there. Imagine, what, what if I came and peed in your house? Fish pee in the ocean all the time. Technically, Wookie, you everyone pees in people's houses as well because you just you just have a room dedicated for it. No, but okay. What if I came and just peed like on your floor? In what, what if I just went and peed in your bed where you sleep? Right, what? the ocean's where the fish sleep. Yeah, stop but, peeing in the fish bed. But the the ocean, but it's like they have effectively handed you a mop. It's just a lot of water. This is. I don't think either of us is going to win this argument. It dilutes um, it. I don't think it does. <laughs> That's okay. how dilution works. Let's agree to disagree. <laughs> In terms of the beach, I I like just I like sitting around. I just like like lounging. Often going to the beach would be accompanied by food. We'd get like fish and chips and go sit and watch the sunset and eat fish and chips. Yeah, I I don't know. I just I just go and hang out on the beach and I go like walk along the seafront. It's really nice. Um, Izzy and I went to a beach it wasn't brighton it was there's a fort there it's, it's got an s in it seaford no i don't know yeah so, seaford um we went to, we went to some other beach and yeah it, had, it, it 
it was really cool. I had a little boardwalk we could go along. And yeah, we could just look out. We saw some boats going out across, I assume, the channel. Um, I don't I don't know geography. I, I, I guess it's the channel. They're just going out to see to see what they can see, see, see. And uh, it was <laughs> it's really pretty. And it's 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 a lot of I know people use sort of sea sounds to relax and it is quite just sort of relaxing. There's that salty smell in the air that's at least to me somewhat pleasant. And you can just sort of feel at one with the ocean. You can go out, you can you know, it, it I think it always looks quite picturesque. I don't know why we I well I find the sea quite beautiful and I don't know if people in general find sort of that view quite pretty, but I think it's it's quite nice. And I've lost track of at all where I'm going with this. It, C, good. C, C, good, good. I, I will add an amendment. We've, we've put some little amendments into this show. Getting back from the sea and being covered in sand and salt that's all dried. Bad, yeah. bad. Oh, I hate Sa- Sandy it. socks, bad, bad. Beach, when you're at the beach, during that time... S- Beach and sea, good, good. Yeah, because, yeah, as you said, there's so many th- fun things you can do. You can go just live life with fish and chips, with not fish and chips. Sometimes you get, like, these donuts from the pier. They're quite cool. You can just, you don't have to get any food. You can just sort of walk. But, yeah, the moment you've got things in your shoe, you've got sandal down you, you go, like, you go swimming in the sea, you have to come out, you're all salty, you need to go and have a shower. and you just Yeah, like, it, it all rose. dries on you. And it's like, oh, that's kind of cool, like... Because obviously, yeah, there's now salt on me because all the water's dried. But then it's like, oh, gross, I'm all crispy. Yeah, you're going to then, and then you hop it. You've got to go get cleaned up. And yeah, then you'll have, free- have a shower when you get home. And then, But if you get home at like eight o'clock in the evening, you have a shower and it ruins your schedule because you usually shower in the morning. You don't want to waste yeah. water for no reason. It's just not good. But while you're there, the beach is good, good. Absolutely. And that is this has three. been a very long recording session. Hambo. It's been quite a long this recording is- session. There's, there's a lot to remove, but that's going to be a tomorrow job. Because for now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the end of the show. We've got to go now. I really want to play Among Us with Wilkie, so we might play a bit of that if I can convince him. I'm going to download it on Steam. You don't got to convince me. I'm, I'm doing it anyway. Oh, heck yeah. I can and... see that Panso have already started the Discord service popping off. Oh, damn. Well, that's it all. Thank you so much for listening. If you liked us, please, you know, subscribe, follow, give us a five-star rating, whatever, whatever is appropriate for the podcast service you use. We appreciate you doing it. We don't pay for, for any advertising. Uh, so if if you do like the show, please like tweet it, uh, send it to your friends. If if your friends are like, oh, I want to get listening to podcasts, maybe try us out. Yeah, we, we try and be funny. We try and also be a bit informative. I think this week's ended up more on the informative scale. But yeah, we mix it up and we mix it around. And I think uh, it's a really, really fun show that we both enjoy doing. If you also want a bit more of us, you can check us out on Instagram. We're boy review i don't know if we're the boy review podcast or boy review i I think we're just at boy review at boy review we post we post content on there frequently and it's we also interact with people if you want to be a member of the good good gang look out for my quiz this week or maybe wilkie will be in charge of this one maybe who knows once i once i get the hang of actually making things i made a post i made made a really really good post wilkie i thought it was i thought that post was good good thank you and and you know let, let us know if if uh like dm us uh, mention us in your story uh, if you've tried something out because of our show. Let us know, like, oh, uh, I, I listened. Yeah, like if you listen to some of the longest Johns because I recommended them, please tell me. Uh, I think the the um, the the what would it be, dopamine or serotonin? Like the the happiness I would get from knowing that someone you know did a thing because I recommended it. That would be incredible. And I'm sure Hamish feels the same. Like that's what what we want to do with the show is like. We're not just out to be judgmental. We want to like provide advice. We want to be informative. So yeah, yeah. We want people to enjoy things. We we want to say, hey, we enjoy this thing. You might enjoy it too. And we also want to say, hey, we didn't enjoy this thing. Maybe be careful about it. But we want, yeah, we want to spread our message. And if you want to try something that we talk about, that's what the point of the show is. That's that's why we do boy review. And now you know our secrets. You have all of our dirty washing. You know what is going on. And so we're going to have to cut the transmission before you triangulate our location. That's the static. Signing off. Over and out.